I'm going to show you how I used AI to make stuff like this, this, and this in a series I call Hidden, short for How I Did That. Explain non-violently. All right, now first step, of course, you're going to want to get access to the AI image generator. We're using Midjourney, midjourney.com. The link is in the description. Once you get to midjourney.com, you want to click on join the beta. It's going to take you to Discord. So you either need to use your existing account if you already have one, or you're going to want to create an account here, which is what I'm going to be doing. I'm just going to type in tutorial Edward and then click continue. And then you just got to verify that you're a human being. So of course, just do whatever it asks you to do. Now, when I did it, it took me to this error page. If this happens to you, just go to discord.com and then click open Discord in your browser and then it'll ask you to fill in the remaining information it needs to set up your account. So I'm gonna go ahead and set up my account here and click claim account. You wanna check your email for an email from Discord and then you just wanna open that email and click verify email and then it'll tell you email verified. After that, you can go back to discord.com. Now on the left side in Discord, you will see this icon for Midjourney as one of your servers. You'll click on Midjourney and now you're in. Now is a good time to note that while you do get a certain number of images generated for free, if you want to continue using it beyond that, you have to pay for a membership. Now, right now, they've decided to give everyone a limited trial of around 25 queries. That doesn't mean you get 25 images. We'll get into that a little bit more later. Now, if you want to use it beyond those 25 queries, here are the standard plans. So basic membership, $10 a month is going to get you about 200 images per month. It's actually a certain number of GPU hours, which averages out to be about 200 images a month. Then you have standard membership, which is $30 a month, and you can use it as many times as you want. If at any time you want to see the subscription information, you could just in the Discord server, go to one of these support channels and then type in slash subscribe. And then when you press enter, it's going to give you an option to open your subscription page, and then you'll be able to see all the information there. Now to generate an image, you got to join one of these newbie channels on the left side here. So any channel that starts with newbies dash whatever number, you can click on one of those and then you can type in slash imagine and then it'll ask you for the prompt. Then you can type in whatever words you want and it'll give you four image results. So just as a demo, I'm going to type in slash imagine beautiful galaxy with vivid colors, comma ultra realistic. And then I'm going to press enter. And then you'll see Midjourney bot getting to work on an image for you. Now, other people's prompts are going into the same channel. So you're going to want to just scroll up so that you can look at the highlighted message, which is your message. And then it's going to take a few seconds. You're going to want to wait and then you'll be able to see the progress. The AI is actually working on your image for you. Now, once it's done, it's going to resend the message at the bottom of the channel with the results here. Now you get all these options. You can either upscale any of these four, or you can ask the AI to create four more variations of any of these four. That's what these buttons are for. This top left is number one, top right is number two, bottom left is number three, and bottom right is number four. So let's say I like the top right one, but I want the composition to be a little bit different and I wanna see what else the AI can come up with for that one. So I'm gonna click V2, which is asking it to create a variation of the top right one. And then it's gonna to get to work. You'll see these highlighted messages of the things that I requested. Now here's the result of those four variations of the second image that I clicked on. So you can see that they're all very similar in terms of composition and colors. They're just slightly varied and maybe you like one of these more than the original. In this case, I actually do like the bottom right one a lot. So I'm going to click upscale the bottom right one and it's going to give me an even more detailed result. And this is the result of that upscale. So you can see it's the same composition, same colors, but there's a lot more detail filled in here. Now, I also want to point out to you that each time we click on one of these buttons, it's using one of those free queries. So if you're trying to get one image out of this through the process of getting to the final image, you're actually going to use multiple queries and it varies depending on how much you like the original four that it shows you, how much exploration you want to do. You know, it could vary a lot. So they give you 25 queries, but that could turn out to be ultimately much fewer images than 25. Now let's say I really like this image. It's still really small in terms of resolution. If I want it to be the highest resolution possible that Midjourney can create, then you just want to click upscale to max. It'll get to work on upscaling it for you to max. Now that's a general basic overview of how Midjourney works, but you can actually give it a lot more parameters. So I'm going to do a rapid fire walkthrough of what all those things are. Okay. First there's dash dash HD, which uses a different algorithm that's potentially better for larger images, but with less consistency in the composition. It's really great for abstract art and landscapes. 
Next is aspect or AR. You'll see in the images that I have created, they're all in this nine by 16 aspect ratio. I just typed in AR nine colon 16 to get that result, but you can make it any resolution you want. Next is seed, which basically determines which road the AI goes down to create your final image. There's a really, really large number of roads that the AI can take to get to the final image. It's actually just over 4 billion, and each of those seeds theoretically results in a significantly different image from another seed. So let's say, for example, you liked the way that the AI handled one of your prompts before. If you're trying to run the prompt again, you can actually tell it to use that same seed to get very similar results to what you got with that original image generation. In the same vein is same seed. By default, all four of the images that Midjourney gives you are going to be of different seeds, but you can actually ask it to use the same seed to generate all of those four images. If you want less variety, use same seed. If you want more variety, don't use same seed. Next is no, you can actually tell Midjourney to exclude certain types of things from the final results. For example, no plants would tell Midjourney to try and remove all plants from the final image generation. Now, if you want even more variety, you can use chaos followed by a number from zero to 100. The higher the value is, the more interesting and unusual the generations will be in exchange for less reliable compositions. Next, you can also add stop with a number between 10 and 100, which will actually stop the image generation at a certain percentage of the progress of the generation. Let's say you actually like how it looks as it's generating something and you want it to stop in the middle of the generation instead of completing it all the way. You can determine the point that it stops at with this parameter. You can add video, which actually saves a progress video of it generating the image for you. And it'll DM you a video link if you react with an envelope. You could also ask it to use previous versions of the AI algorithm versions one or two, we're currently on version three, which it uses by default. But if you wanted to explore what things would look like with previous generations of the algorithm, you could use this parameter. There's also Uplight, which uses the light upscaler, which upscales an image without adding as much detail as a regular upscale would. You're also not limited to just words for prompting. You can also use an image prompt. All you have to do is type in imagine and then paste the URL of the image that you're trying to use as the prompt. And Midjourney will actually use that image as visual inspiration. And you can actually get even further control by typing in IW followed by a value which will allow you to change the weight of the image URL versus the text that you're also typing in. And if you wanted certain words in your text prompt to hold more weight than other words, then you can actually add two colons after the word and then increase the weight of the word. By default, the weight is one, but you can increase it to 1.5 or two even to ask Midjourney to give that word more weight. Another important parameter is stylized. So you can actually tell Midjourney how artistic and stylistic you would like it to be. By default, stylize is at 2500, but if you decrease it, you can have the image be less artistic and stick more closely and more strictly to your text prompt. This is good for advanced users, but if you want it to take over and basically have more and more creative freedom to even stray from what you originally put in, then increasing it up to something like 60,000 would be like hands off the wheels, who knows what's gonna happen it might look nothing like your prompt, but it would have interesting results potentially. Now you also have the ability to define your quality values, which not only determines the quality of the images you get back, but it also determines how many GPU hours you're actually paying for. So you can actually affect how cheap or how expensive an image generation will cost you. The lower the quality value is, the rougher the result, but the cheaper it is. The higher the value is, the more expensive the result is, but the more detailed and higher quality the result is. Now, those are all the things that you can do with Midjourney, but I'm gonna give you a few tips that have been really helpful for me in terms of getting the best results. I got a lot of questions from you guys about this, so let's talk about it. What I highly recommend is going into Discord, going into one of these newbie rooms, and you'll be able to look and see what are other people doing, and you can see their prompts as well. Now, I would recommend scrolling through this for a really long time and just looking and getting a feel for, you know, what kind of prompts generate what kind of images. And of course, if you see something that you really like and you're really drawn to, pay attention to what that person asked for. So this Sunrise on Mars actually really sticks out to me. He added epic, cinematic, and high detail. So maybe I wanna go in and try something else, not type in the exact same thing, but maybe I wanna try man walking on clouds. 
epic cinematic high detail and see what kind of vibe that gives to the image. And then I keep scrolling and let's say I like how this looks. I'm gonna type in maybe melancholy, see what, how that affects the vibe of the image. So the idea is to go through and look at what other people are creating and, and what has resulted in successful images or images that are closer to what you prefer and take inspiration from them and use that to inform the way that you create as well. So a lot of the images that I've created is actually the results of me looking at 10, 20 different people's prompts, picking the words that I felt like were the most interesting and then maybe even making variations of those words and then exploring what combinations of which prompts actually work the best together. And that's what actually brings me to the final result that I actually like. So there's a lot of exploration, a lot of experimentation. It's not as simple as you typing in a word and then getting the result that you like that's beautiful and the AI did everything. You actually have to do a lot of work as the human being operating the AI. Now, if you have a subscription, what's even better than scrolling through the Discord channel is actually coming to this community feed on midjourney.com and then typing in whatever you want and you'll be able to see all the results from everyone who has used Midjourney publicly. So let's say I wanted to explore that man walking on clouds idea. So I'm gonna type in walking on clouds and then see if there's anybody who has ever used that prompt and I'm gonna sort it by top of all time. And if any of these stick out to me as something that I kind of like the vibe of, maybe I like the mood, maybe I like the composition, maybe I like a certain part of it, I'm going to click on it and then I'll be able to see the entire prompt here. And then maybe I, I look at this and say, oh, I do want realistic lighting. I do want to include the word heaven. And then I'm going to try that and, and explore and experiment and see what that comes up with. Midjourney was designed this way intentionally so everyone works together collaboratively to create new things and build on top of what other people have done so that we can all work together to explore and create brand new things that have never been made before. Another really common question I get from you guys is whether the images that you generate using this AI can be used for commercial purposes. You actually do own all the assets that you create using this AI with two exceptions. Number one is if you're not a paid member, Midjourney still owns those images. You cannot use it for commercial purposes in that situation. The second one is if you are a paid member, if you're an employee or owner of a company that grosses over a million US dollars a year, you have to purchase a corporate membership plan. But besides that right now, if you're subscribed to Midjourney, then you are able to use all of these assets for commercial purposes. A couple other notes, by default, all of the images you generate are viewable to the entire Midjourney community. If you want a private plan, it's a little more expensive, you can upgrade to it and all of your images that you generate and your prompts will be a secret. You also cannot use Midjourney to create offensive or aggressive or abusive content. No adult content, no gore, nothing visually shocking or disturbing, and all of these rules are actively enforced. And overall, I want you to know that Discord is technically still in a beta, so the experience is constantly changing and they're constantly updating it. They're constantly sending announcements, saying which updates they're doing. They're, they're communicating really well about this. So the experience that I'm telling you right now now is the experience as of August 20th, 2022. Another cool thing is you can actually bring in the Midjourney bot to your server. So if you go into the Discord server and then you look at any of the messages that Midjourney bot has sent, if you just click on Midjourney bot, you can actually click add to server. It'll actually allow you to pick what server you want to add it to. I don't have a server, so I can't add it to anything. And if you just want to DM the bot itself, you can also click on the Midjourney bot profile, click send message, and then you can generate images here, which you can see here that I've already done before. That's a complete overview of everything that you can do with Midjourney as of today. If you have any other questions or clarifying questions, I would recommend checking out the documentation that I've linked below on the actual midjourney.com website. But if you have any other questions or you're curious about anything else, you can leave a comment below and then I will talk to you. And of course, if you want more graphic design content, I'm not gonna do strictly AI content, but there will be a vast breadth. I am a graphic designer, this is a tool. But if you have any other video ideas that you want to see me make, if you're curious about anything, just let me know in the comments. Subscribe. Destroy that like button. Thank you for watching, and I will talk to you next time. Peace.